welcome back to the shop. Um, we got a little bit of a different project going on than what I thought I was going to have today. Uh, I wanted to make the handle for the quick change tool post, but I didn't have the stock uh, in the shop to do it. The, uh, the one inch stock that I have is a little too small, and my only next size up in steel is two inch, which is a little too big. I didn't want to have to cut all that down. So once I get that stock, that will definitely be a project, but uh, for now we got something a little bit different going on. But before we get to that, I got a present for Tom Lipton. I have one too. <laughs> now this is uh, this is actually mine from when I was a kid, so it's probably oh, uh, early mid '80s and um, actually mid to mid to late '80s. And um, mine works. A little extendable ladder. I just found it funny when I saw this on uh, one of Tom's videos. I'm like, hey, that looks really familiar. Um, good old steel Tonka trucks. I kept all these, all these toys. They're actually next door in a box. And um, the wife doesn't particularly like that, but you know what? They're my toys, and I'm keeping them. So anyway, I just thought that was funny. So let's uh, set up on the workbench here, and we'll see a little project for today. So our project for today is to replicate this. Now I used to have two tabs, one here and one here. And what this is, is it's off of this. And no, it's not another toy, this is a piggy bank. And it is missing a wheel, but this um, is a separate stamped piece and this wheel is cast directly to this, uh, to this axle here. So this is best made with um, using some uh, casting resin, making a mold and casting that like a model maker would. But this little stopper here used to go in, twist, and lock, and it and then you know it pretty much doesn't really lock anymore. So we have to replicate that, and uh, this will become our buy a milling machine piggy bank. So any change in anything I get is going in this guy, and in 20 years we'll have enough to buy a milling machine. So, so that's uh, what we have to make is we have to replicate this. Now, I wanted to use the Delrin that I have, which is inch, inch and three eighths, but that is the exact same size as that hole, so that's kind of out. But I do have inch and a half uh, aluminum, so I'm going to end up making it out of that. And another little project I need to take on um, is another piggy bank and is this key is missing. Now it's not really a key per se. Um, I don't know if you can, this outside hub basically just spins around here and uh, inside there, let me see if I can get it lined up, you can kind of see two little divots. It was like a fork that held into this divot and this divot and then there was a guide bar that went in the middle and that allowed you to lock it and unlock it. And uh, right now it's locked. I think you can get this in here and unlock it. And there it's unlocked. Whoop, unlocked. And yeah, you can put your coins in here, those go up here, and then you have another little spot for your bills which fall down there. Um, now I've, I've had these forever, and my both of my, uh, my grandfathers and my uncle all worked for the the post office so it came from one of them I'm not sure who but uh, my my uncle was a mail carrier one grandfather was a mail carrier and then the other grandfather was a mail carrier but at the end he was postal police if I remember right and this more than likely came from them I, I'm not sure the vintage or the age of these um, this is all stamped metal and you can see it's not welded it's all put together with screws but this is uh, Western Stamping Corp made in Korea and this one here is, uh, you can see, is spot welded together. And uh, this one says on the bottom, uh, Brumberger, made in USA, Brooklyn. So, like I said, I, I'm not sure of the vintage of these things, but um, I do just want to, you know, get the key to this and fix them and, you know, have a nice place to put the change. So, uh, let's set up over on the lathe and we'll get to making that part. Alright, I have my stock in there. I already faced the end. Now we're just going to take a truing cut. Whoa. 
I'll just take 20 thousandths there. And I'm going to reset the zero on my dial at that point. Kick in some feed here. take the diameter down. Let me get the part now. Go uh, 370,000, one inch 370 thousandths is what we need. And right now we're at one inch 300 and no one, sorry, one inch 483 and we want that to be done to a length of 0.175 I believe that's what I got roughly I use just rough measurements nothing really huge I'm gonna use my dial indicator here on my base We're just going to first take a hundred. Call that zero. And now this is just clearance and everything for the inside. I had a grooving tool, there it is. Okay, so you just go ahead and square this up here. Just square this block up right against the edge of the work because that's already faced nice and flat. So I'm touching there, I'm touching the end inside. So I'm gonna set my dial at zero. I'm gonna figure out what's coming out when I go out. So there's zero there. So we got to go in to my other zero. So we gotta go in actually a uh, hundred thousand, so or two hundred thousands rather. Now again the width of this groove is kind of arbitrary. Well, this tab, the actual width of the tool is the thick, uh, a little bit more than the thickness of the actual uh, sheet metal, but the actual distance from the inside here to the start of the groove is kind of arbitrary. We just want enough so that we can easily cut it. So we're just eyeballing this. That looks pretty good there. Actually, we're going to be grooving so I'm going to slow this down a little bit lock the carriage down and I'll see if we can get in in here a little bit 
a little bit of juice. Gonna give it a five thousand extra just in case. Again, this is all arbitrary. Okay, I'm good there. So now we gotta make our tabs. Oh, it came out blurry. Sorry about that. And yeah, now that focused a little bit. Now we have to make our tabs out of that. So what I wanna do first here, clean off all the goop. Now this doesn't have to be super accurate, so all we're going to do is grab a scriber. Oh, camera's in my way, sorry guys. So all I'm doing is scribing a center line here carriage out the way. Okay, so I have that center line. Now we'll just by eyeball here, we'll bring it up to that side and actually easier for me to do it this way. And we'll just by eyeball again, again nothing supremely accurate here, we'll bring it right there. So now that's going to be the center of our tab. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, pick up that mark there, my eyeball will bring it right up. And using a square, and bring it right over. All right, so now I got to figure out the actual width of those tabs. So give me a second. All right, so the actual tabs are uh, two hundred seventy thousandths. So I'm going to go with two hundred fifty thousandths to give it some clearance. And so 125 thousandths off of that scribe line on either side here is uh, basically what we want. Again, this is all eyeball because it's going to be refined as we go with it. Okay, so now I just have a little chisel here and I'm going to do is find that line and pretty good there There. This chisel kind of sucks royally. No idea where I got it, but it's pretty soft. But this is just aluminum. Alright, so those are my tabs right there. And then the rest of this metal, you should be able to just.
and then we'll clean that up after. So let me go through all this here. All right, I got most of the material off. Now we should be able to just clean this up by taking our grooving tool here and just coming right over the parts that we just chiseled out right up to the end. And that should clean most of it up. Now right, we got that pretty much all smoothed out. Um, got a few little divots from the chisel. I know it was a shitty chisel. But it's all I had on hand, and you know it doesn't have to win any beauty contests. So uh, we're gonna put a little bit of a neural on here so we can grab it easily. So let's get going with that. And now we just need to pot this off. I'll we'll say right about there looks pretty good. I'm just gonna put it back in and we're gonna face that one edge. So I'm gonna put it in to this shoulder here. Pretty true, and it is.
and there it is. Let's go over the bench and see if she fits. Alright, so here's the finished product. Here's one tab here. Here's the other tab here. I rounded the edges as best I can so it doesn't have a, a sharp corner to hang up on. Um, you can see where I dug a little too deep with that chisel here and there. Again, I know it's not the right chisel for the job and it was kind of a shitty chisel to begin with, but uh, I just wanted to get this done so I can stop putting change in this thing. Uh, the knurl, it's not the greatest in the world, a little bit of a double track, but you know, we're just using it as a gripping surface. It just needs to be functional, it doesn't have to win any contests. So, we go in there and we definitely fit nice. Um, what I might end up doing is just make a little scribe mark on either end here in line with those uh, tabs just so I know where they are. And that's it. So we pretty much got a working piggy bank here. I uh, just got to fix its paw and it'll be 100%. So we can start saving. And I know this project was uh, a little bit different. You know, a little, just, just a little quick repair, nothing huge. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get all the stock for the quick change uh, tool post handle. And hopefully we can get to that next weekend. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you on the next one.